Hello and welcome to the PDF video. In this video we're going to take a look at exporting to PDF. Now there's many reasons you would want to do this but the three main ones that I can think of are firstly it's amazing for when you're exporting to paperback. It really retains all the formatting far better than any other file format I can think of. So whether you're exporting to um, create space which is a print on demand service or a traditional publisher PDF is your go-to file format. Secondly is its flexibility. Every computer can read PDF so if you're sending out your books to say uh, beta readers so that they can read them in advance of publication so that you can have reviews ready PDF is a great format for that. And lastly is the security. It's one of the best file formats for adding security to for, you know, you can lock down printing, editing and everything else with passwords. Word formats can do that, but not as well as PDFs. So uh, with that said, let's jump straight in. OK, so to export to PDF, you would either come up to this icon and click it, which will open your PDF export window. If this icon isn't present in your toolbar, then go to File, Export, and Export to PDF. Okay, so since making the export videos, uh, Papyrus has had an update. So instead of Export, um, in the File menu, it's now called Publish. And you can also export or publish your files from this new menu called author and you come down to publish again and from here you can publish to word pdf and ebook so on this first tab you can see um, there's two options create pdf for printing or create for distribution so this is uh, if you were for instance sending to a print on demand service a pod like uh, Lulu, Create Space, something like that, or indeed taking it to a local printer for them to print out if you didn't want to go the online way, then this is the one you would tick. Now, if we tick uh, Create for Distribution, um, that this is more something where you would be, say, for instance, sending your PDF to, say, beta readers, and you wanted it in an electronic format and you want all your hyperlinks left intact. If I just drag this this way, for instance, in this table of contents, these are all hyperlinks. So they will be left intact when I do the export. Destination is where you want to save it. So generally, it will save your PDF to wherever your PAP file is. So in this case, the PAP file or the project is in Temporal Drift. Uh, my stuff, Temporal Drift, Temporal Drift, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to save it to just directly to the desktop. So I'm going to click this icon and this is where you would pick and choose where you want to save to. So I'm choosing desktop and it will save it to my desktop. Now in miscellaneous there are a few more options that you can add um, into the distribution file. If you're exporting it for distribution you can pick and choose uh, what is shown. For instance export link colours. Uh, include screen elements and so on. Export coast text, which you probably wouldn't do, but I'm going to export it with the sticky notes and comments embedded just to demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to go export. And this is just to highlight um, that the hyperlinks and so on work within your document. So if I was to go on to chapter one and click on it, the hyperlink works. And you can see that it's also left in um, my notes, sync breakers, and so on. Okay, so that's exporting uh, to distribution. So I'm just going to pause for a minute and open another document. Okay, so I'm back again. This time I'm in a completed document. This is actually one of my books that's already finished. Again, you can see there's hyperlinks in the table of contents. It is imperative that when you're making a file for, for printing, um, as I say, for a pod or, or for a, your local printer, that no hyperlinks are included. So this time when I select PDF, I'm going to go Create PDF for Printing. This will remove 
all hyperlinks. Next thing we're going to look at is quality. These settings up here, unless you have to email something and you have to compress the PDF because it's too large to email, you really don't want to be messing around with these. Um, for instance, if you embed the JPEG, it really decreases the quality of the JPEG. And again, if you start messing around with DPI, the quality of the overall PDF will drop. If you end up with a really large PDF because it's full of pictures, say a 100 meg PDF, then I'd advise you actually upload it to something like Dropbox and then send them a downloadable link rather than trying to decrease the size to an emailable size. Talking about books that would have pictures in them, this is when the color set profiles come in. If you're just exporting a book, which is what I do, mainly fiction, has no pictures, and if there are pictures, they're like line drawings, like maps, you don't really have to worry about color profiles. But if you're exporting something with high definition pictures in, then this is when color profiles come in. Now, color pro profiles, depending on your print, whether you use a pod or whether you use your local printer, you will have to ask them the color profiles that they use. CMYK is probably the um, most popular one. I think that stands for something like Sienna, Magentis, Yellow and Key. That's going to be the most prolifically one used because it's four colors. This refers to like the, the paper type. So, you know, and there is lots here whether it's coated, uncoated paper, you know, so there's a lot in here. You will have to establish from either your pod or your printer what color profile they use and all of these settings. If you're working with a pod, it will be on their website somewhere. A local printer will simply tell you. Now, if they use some kind of exotic profile that's specific to them, they will give you a uh, that profile and that's where this icon comes in you would download their uh, or import their profile their color profile into papyrus so that when you create your pdf it is the correct profile but like i say these are only important if you're exporting pictures within your document if you're just doing text which is what i basically do all the time then this you don't have to worry about this setting okay the next thing we come to is password, which is security. Again, with if you're exporting to um, editors and publishers, you're not really going to add too many securities. But if you're exporting to something like beta readers, you're going to want to add security because you do not want the beta readers making changes to your document. Okay, so this is where um, this. Uh, password comes in so you would choose create encrypted password you could put a password um, on the main document so you have to enter a password to open it or you could specify a password to control the privileges now I've put a really imaginative password in uh, but this is just for an example so you would enter your passwords here then you would go to privileges and say what you want the the end reader to be able to do uh, for instance you probably don't want them to be able to copy the uh, content and uh, the text and pictures so you would disable that you probably don't want them to be able to modify the pdf so you would disable that but you might want them to be able to comment because if you're sending it to pdf uh, sorry to beta readers you're doing that so you get their feedback so you might want to enable comments and you might want to enable print okay so with that privilege, with those privileges turned on and those passwords turned on, and a bit more of an imaginative password than that, you can then export and you've got a secure PDF that you can send out to people that can't be tampered with, so they can't mess around or copy your your um, your work. Okay, so that was the PDF video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. It's a great format to export to if you're distributing uh, your file to anyone. Um, so with that said, I'll catch you later.